This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now Dwayne talks with Frank Harper, a central Kansas farmer and rancher, about his operation. Dwayne Thames joining you once again uh, with another segment on my farm. A chance to catch up with Frank Harper, Sedgwick, Kansas, right in the central part of the state, uh, a little northwest of Wichita. Frank, tell us about uh, your operation and what you got going on there. Well, the operation there is mainly in a grain farming area. Uh, so uh, we, we farm corn, soybeans, uh, wheat, uh, some alfalfa. Um, also there we do some background in growing cattle. Um, kind of supplements my ranching operation over north of El Dorado, but uh, there at home it's mainly grain and, and some dry lot cattle. Talk a little bit about uh, it's an interesting year in that part of the state. Uh, you maybe had more moisture than uh, what one would have wanted in any particular time. Well, it's certainly been an interesting year. It's been a stressful year. You know, about everyone I've talked with, uh, doesn't take long before everybody says, boy, I'm ready to bury 2019. Uh, I think uh, to really put a finger on, it's kind of hard. You know, we started the year uh, pretty wet, tough feeding conditions, just a tough, wet spring, uh, kind of entered summer uh, similarly. Uh, but then we hit dry spell right now in early September, so it's kind of the best of or the worst of both worlds, I guess. Probably the biggest challenge this year is just uh, was getting the crop in, then getting the crop in, and we're, we're kind of in a, I guess, kind of a river and creek valley there at Sedgwick, so we get we get some flooding. Uh, never recall the Little Ark River getting out. Uh, usually about one time every two or three years, possibly four times this year from October of of uh, 18 through the spring of 19 just unbelievable tough on the guys in the river area obviously with that kind of moisture uh, the expectation was that uh, our fall harvest might be pretty good but uh, it seems like we had some heat maybe at the wrong time uh, on some of the corn you know that's a really good good point uh you know we had uh, uh you know the challenging start to the corn crop got some of our traditionally planted corn in and in uh, first part of april you know and then it just was nothing for for about three or four weeks in there and then some of that crop was replanted so what we're dealing with now is some below average or average to below average yields uh, i think in our area probably dry land would be ranging in that you know mid 70s to maybe 115 to 20. Uh, i think we're we're at we're kind of in the middle of uh, dryland corn harvest we're looking at probably you know a 90 plus bushel average which isn't bad but it's still tough with the cost of putting the crop out it's 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 probably below where we need to be uh but uh yeah as far as uh, uh the hot dry weather in july it did take the top off of it had fantastic looking soybean crop uh but it's boy the last uh, two or three weeks have taken the top out of it it's been pretty discouraging so you obviously you'd reference that you've got a cattle operation as well. Does that help in terms of uh, utilizing some additional uh, forage options uh, in your crop system? Well, I'm sitting on a lot of alfalfa hay right now and not much good quality. I think that's what I hear a lot. Uh, you probably never have had a tonnage crop like we've had this year in alfalfa. Just, you know, the first two cuttings were thrown together and uh, and then the last cutting was pretty decent. But as far as the, the cattle operation, yeah, it's been, it's, it's a great mix uh, uh, for my operation to have both the cattle and the farming. But both have been challenging this year. You know, probably on the cattle side, uh, more winter, winter feeding conditions, uh, whether that's in the, in the backgrounding at home or the feedlots out west where I like to finish cattle. Um, but uh, as far as summer grazing, uh, it's been good. Uh, we had good yearling gains this summer. Uh, going into fall in pretty good shape on grasslands. But uh, as far as complementary type uh, forage, uh, yeah, lots of forage, not much value out there though. So you'd referenced uh, feedlots, uh, retained ownership. Are you feeding a, a fair part of your own cattle, Frank? Um, we try to feed most all of our own home-raised cows off of our cow, uh, calves off of our cow herd. Then I also buy um, both local calves and then calves out of the south. So we we kind of try to tap all of it. We're not much good at any of it, but we try to do it all and see which one works. But yeah, uh, the feedlot sector, the commercial feed feeding sector, has been a part of my operation uh, for a good number of years, and and that involves both our yearlings, our cow calf uh, offspring as well as purchase cattle just throughout the year for margin cattle type income. So has that allowed you to capture some of the genetic gains maybe that you've seen uh, that you've invested in? You know I think so. I think it's been good. I think uh, it's taught us a lot about our cattle. 
Um, you know, I've seen, uh, you know, we're here today at Stalker Day, and it's it's uh, interesting to hear the improvement is what we've seen as an industry in genetics. Uh, we've seen that too in our own herds, but also in the cattle we've purchased uh, traditionally from areas that maybe are, are maybe characterized as not having the genetics. I think the industry as a whole has just done a better job at, at uh, producing those genetics. And, you know, we've captured some really good premiums this summer, um, just grid premiums on cattle, whether those are uh, home-raised cattle, native cattle, or some of our, you know, southeast-type cattle that uh, traditionally maybe wouldn't be thought of as those uh, those carcass-type quality cattle. But, they, yes, that's been a big part of, of just kind of staying in business over the years. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after the break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update.